Hi, in this tutorial we are going to take a look at conducting what's known as a sensitivity analysis using data tables. A sensitivity analysis is useful when you know that one of your value drivers is subject to variation. Oftentimes, if you're starting a savings plan, your interest rate is subject to variation. You know the interest rate you're going to receive today, but that interest rate is subject to change at any time. You can mitigate some of that risk by investing your money in a certificate of deposit, but after the uh, time limit of your certificate of deposit has expired, that interest rate is going to change again. So we'd like to know how much we'll save knowing that there's going to be a variation in that interest rate. So let's take a look at an example that we're likely to encounter or something similar. So you're thinking ahead and you're looking at your life and you think, hey, you know, I don't want to grow up and be old and having wasted a lot of my life working. For my 40th birthday, when I'll have saved enough money, I'm going to take a trip around the world for an entire year. I'm going to start saving today. And your guess is that you can put aside about $100 a month for your trip. You want to get the most return that you can, and you know that historically the stock market has earned about 8% per year, can uh, vary widely in any given year or any given five-year period, uh, so you're not really certain how much you're going to have. You don't want to say it's really going to be 8% per year. You know that you have 20 years until you turn 40. We're going to assume that you're 20 years old now, so we want to know how much you're going to have saved when it's time to take the trip. But because you know that the stock market's unpredictable, you want to do a sensitivity analysis to see, you know, even if the stock market has a very, very small return, are you going to have enough money to take this trip? And if the stock market has a great return, exactly how luxurious of a trip can you take? So let's plug in some of our value drivers. First is our estimated $100 per month savings. The next is our 8% per year interest. And our other is 20 years that we're going to save for. And so one thing that we want to notice is that our savings amount is per month, our interest rate is per year, and our time period is in years, 20 years. So we have to adjust our future value to take into account that we're making monthly payments. So we're going to have to adjust our interest rate to a monthly interest rate and our number of years into months. We use the future value command and our interest rate is 8% per year, so we're going to enter it as 8% divided by 12. Our number of periods is 20 years, but in order to turn that into months, we need to multiply it by 12. And our payment, which I'm going to enter as a negative number, is $100 per month. I don't need to change anything. I don't have a present value, but since I'm starting saving immediately, I'm going to enter 1 because it's a savings plan and I'm going to start today. So it looks like at the end of those 20 years, if we earn 8% per year and deposit $100 per month, we should have $59,000 saved. But what is that going to do if we can deposit maybe a little bit more? Or what is that going to do? How's that going to be if our interest rate varies? What if it's 4%? What if it's 15%, right? So let's take a look. What we're going to do first is go up to this top corner so the first thing that you do when you're doing a data table is you make a cell reference in your corner. So in my top left hand corner, I'm going to set it equal to my future value. And what I'm, wanna, what I'm going to want to see is how that future value varies as a function of the rate of return that I earn and as a function of my monthly deposit. So for my monthly deposit, let's look at monthly deposits between $50 and $200 in $25 increments. So we'll go 75 to 200. Up here next to that NPV cell, or that future value cell, we're going to do our interest rates. Let's start at 4%, and let's go in one percentage point in intervals, increments, between 4%, well, let's see, we can extend it a little farther, 13, 14, 15. And then to keep my, the rest of my spreadsheet balanced, I'm just going to merge these over 
using the merge across function to get them to extend all the way over. Then it stays looking nice and I feel like we're in balance. All right, back to the data table. I've got my rates of return here in this row and I've got my monthly deposit amounts in this column. So I start by clicking on my net present value and dragging it over, dragging my, creating a box that makes a big rectangle, including the whole entire area where I want my sensitivity analysis to appear. Then I go up to data, and on my Mac it goes data to data table, but sometimes it's data to what if analysis um, to data table. There's a good description in the book if you're using a PC. So whether you're on PC or Mac, you're going to get something like this. It's going to ask you what your row input cell and what your column input cell is. So my row input cell is interest rate. And I'm going to go and highlight or click on the cell that serves the same function that I want these to serve in this equation. So in this net present value, the interest rate is 8%. And I want it to, in all of these cells, tell me what that future value is going to be at all these different interest rates. And then in my column, I have my monthly deposit. So in my future value calculation that has become the corner of my data table, the monthly deposit is entered in this cell. I click OK and it magically fills it in. I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to put it in dollar terms with no decimals because that is the easiest way to make it look manageable to the eye, in my opinion. So we can see that if we make $50 per month deposits and we earn 4% interest, we're going to have $18,000 per year. You can look in any one column. At 4% interest per year, if that's the rate of return you earn, your deposit is going to yield you a future value in the end of anywhere between $18,000 and $400. Similarly, a $200 deposit per month will yield you anywhere between $73,000 per year and $303,000 per year, depending on the rate of return. So this data table gives us an idea of how much we're going to have in the future given certain parameters. And if we know that we are going to need, say, $55,000 per year for this trip, we know that we're going to want to save most likely more than $50 because we're going to be relying on a very unusually high long-term interest rate in order to receive that. So we can kind of get an idea of the amount of deposit that we're going to need to make if we're going to have certain interest rates. And it gives us a little bit more information of how sensitive our savings amount is to things like the amount of deposit we make and the interest rate that we earn. One thing about a data table is that you can't really change anything in it. You can't change part of a table. And then you can't always get out, right? See, I can't get out. It won't let me out. And you'll get stuck in the data table and you can't get out. Oh, I got out. That was a fluke. <laughs> I assure you, you'll get stuck in the data table and you'll, you won't be able to get out. I was able to just get out. If you can't get out, hit escape. Um, I don't know how I just got out. Pay no attention to me. <laughs> Escape is what gets you out. Um, or just randomly figuring it out like I did, but I've had students get really, really stuck and it's a very frustrating experience. So um, after that interesting incident, I will leave you to calculate your savings problem. Um, let me know if there's anything I can do to give you a hand.